What's going on YouTube? Welcome to PCP Savage. What is really happening? In today's episode, upgrading hammer on my Impact M3 30 cal 700 millimeter. As you know, if you're following my um, channel, if not, please subscribe. If you're following me, you know that we switch to um, slugs. And with a stock hammer, there's a limitation in how much pressure you can put on your um, on the stock hammer. The hammer weight relates to the how much pressure you can give. So let me explain this really uh, quick, simple and easy, okay? Pressure pushes on the back of the valve and then there's a hammer hits that valve to open it, okay? It counter forces the, the air. So the pressure and, uh, and the hammer weight are counter forcing each other and that weight with the pressure behind it the weight pushes the valve and opens it there there is a point when you can max out on how much um, air you can give so for the stuck hammer on m3 130 bar on the second regulator it's max pressure you can give to gain the the speed after 130 bar stock hammer you cannot gain any more speed i'm using um, RMR 30 caliber 45 grain they are FX uh, hybrids um, RMR makes um, them for FX and FX rebrands them and calls them hybrids but those are the same uh, same slug so valves wide open the fastest you can go is about 960 uh, feet per second 960 and then that that's your max speed and then at that point you need to um, tune so you need to close the valve to get your tuning done and you're losing another 30 or 40 uh, feet per second so re realistically tuned this thing is going 900 to 920 feet per second that that's it, it at best okay with a 700 millimeter liner that that's best you can get out of it with the stock internals 130 bar pressure 700 millimeter all tuned 900 to 920 feet per second that's it to get more speed there's a couple le levels of upgrades you can do to um, to make it uh, to gain more speed first level is uh, tungsten hammer weight uh, I believe the stock hammer is six and a half grams tungsten that I'm upgrading to is seven and a half and you can also get eight and a half tungsten the first stage is just to replace the hammer weight the second stage would be that hammer plus the spring hammer spring you're gonna gain a little more with that and then the third stage is gonna be a heavier hammer a spring hammer spring and then the lighter valve spring that's not the whole kit you need to get uh, to get more speed out of it that, that, so there's a few stages of what you can do and by the way get yourself a coffee uh, this is gonna be a long morning tuning it coffee's good <coughs> <coughs> what I was gonna say is in this case right now what I'm gonna do is we are just gonna upgrade hammer weight only see the gains we're gonna get out of it I'm hoping to be in about high 900 ish 900s We'll see if we can, uh, we're able to get to that point. Okay, so let's get to what we need to do to get that going. Uh, we're zero here, delete it, and we're zero on the uh, second stage. So we're uh, good to go. Listen, guys, <clears throat> I can't stress enough how important it is to upgrade your. Uh, backbone to the uh, heavier one um, using air marksmanship um, top backbone to upgrade when you go to the higher power levels it's not just about the look and everything it's also about the the flex because once you start pushing more of the hammer and um, heavier more of the, the the pressure there's more flex happening to this uh, platform okay you do need to upgrade the, the thing or it's gonna be flexing and you and vibrating and doing all those different weird harmonics okay 
that upgrade alone improved my groups and listen stay tuned to the end of the video because we're gonna have to adjust our C1 okay you wanna you wanna watch that you don't wanna miss out on uh, important stuff okay 11 millimeter and this is your C1 at the end we'll we'll adjust that um, gap right here you wanna if you don't know what it is Trust me, you want to stick around. When you're holding your um, valve spring rod, make sure you use a piece of leather. Just get a piece of belt, leather belt or something. Because if you're um, using pliers, you'll put the scratches in that. And then it's just going to it's gonna cost you later. Hammer group can come out. When you have this apart and you don't have your hammer polished, you really really need to do that i'm telling you i'm gonna put a link in the in the top right corner in the description below how to polish your hammer group it affects a lot consistency of your your feet per second spread will be affected by this we're gonna put a little bit of our super lube on the hammer way just because the spring that's where the spring rides on i always put more on the spring just because they're and on this because this what that's what rides on the yeah you already heard it right <clears throat> putting this all back inside okay so now yep it catches it perfect always check my reloading bar I know it's not gonna change or anything, but it needs to be at 21 centimeters to 110 millimeters. If it's not, you guys are in trouble. Make sure you're well lubricated on all the points because all of this is sliding inside the, the channels in there, okay? And listen guys, if you're not subscribed to this channel, please click that subscribe button, you know? Absolutely zero cost for you to subscribe and like the video, but it helps me a lot all right nice and smooth now now we're gonna adjust that promised c1 i was talking about we're gonna hold it and screw that beast back in so you put your wheel uh, macro on one one or one and a half i usually put it on one and a half this guy is pushed all the way in and it's showing on the back in there. You, you know what I'm talking about. Now get your uh, caliper. And so the distance between the tip of this and the body of the impact, I like it to put six millimeter. A factory is about six and a half. They're very inconsistent. I've seen them all kinds of different uh, length. Some people like five and a half. I like a little more um, adjustability so I do that I put them on six millimeter six and a half right now and twist a little more 6.05 okay 6.05 that's good enough um, okay I always put a little bit of grease um, lube on this o-ring because as you turning this thing on and off it's nice to have a little smooth operation all right and see where we're gonna get with this and what pressure what pressure do we need to max out this hammer so pretty much what we're gonna try to do is we're gonna try to max out this seven and a half grain hammer weight is it really worth of upgrading okay so we went through about three bottles 580 cc bottles and many magazines testing on RMR uh, 45 grain 30 caliber uh, slugs so here is what I got out of it previously before the upgrade 16 on the macro wheel all the way um, open on the micro was like almost at 5 and uh, well I'm always testing when I'm trying to get my uh, full speed I have the valve spring 
wide open. Imagine where the fifth line would be. I have it on fifth line. I was able to get 970 feet per second. And then when I tune it down, uh, use, useful, 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 uh, uh, can get the worst out today than a new coffee. 920 after all tuned. Uh, 920 925 feet per second or below you know if you wish to slow it down so that was the the best i can get out of it 970 and now i started i, I figured you know what i'm gonna go down to 120 bar and oh whoa previously um i was in 130 bar on the stock everything uh my uh first regulator delete second reg was on 130 bar that's when you max out on your um hammer so I started with 120 bar and I went 130, 135, 140, 150, 55, 60, you know, and I tested all out. So 120 bar, we, uh, we couldn't get above uh, 926 feet per second and that was on the wheel 12. Anything above uh, number 12 on this wheel, uh, it was just de decreasing because it wasn't just... Um, just enough pressure to send it with that hammer okay then I decided to skip 125 went straight to 130 bar uh, wheel 8 was 950 9 953 10 952 and it starts decreasing so again about um, wheel on the wheel number 8 8 950 was the best I can, uh, can get out of it with 130 bar on the second reg then I, I went to 135 bar and the best I can get is a 960 feet per second. So with five bars, we only gain, you know, um, 10 feet per second. Then I went 140 bar on the regulator. And with the uh, wheel on uh, 13, my best speed was 974. Then I went to 150 bar. Okay, that's where that... Uh, magic happened on a hundred 150 bar on the regulator. I was on a wheel on uh, 15 and 16. I was getting 995 feet per second. Okay, 995. We're, we're talking thousand feet per second. Okay, that's good. 15 and 16 were about the same. Um, then I went, I decided, you know, I'm gonna go 155 bar and that's again, that's when we maxed out the hammer anything that this this 6 point uh, 7.5 gram is limits at 150 bar it was um, staying about the same nothing improved so I scroll back down to 150 which I am right now 150 okay and I played a little more with the micro uh, wheel adjustments and my final and best I was able to get is string of the wheel 14, 15, and 16. We're doing the same 999, 996, 998. So within you know two, three feet per second, we were about the same thing. So I left it on 16. I um, dialed down the micro to a whooping. It's like four, right outside of 4.5, like 4.75 um, on a micro. That was my best. So, if you're upgrading just a hammer weight, no spring, okay, 150 bar, that's the best you can get out of that. If you wanna, so we gain from uh, 970 to 1000. So we gain 30 feet per second with just a hammer weight upgrade. If you wanna upgrade hammer weight spring, that's going to give you a little more. I think it with the spring, you're going to get another 10 or maybe, maybe 20 feet per second. Okay. But that's about it. If you're not subscribed to the channel, please click subscribe button. It costs you absolutely nothing. I hope you learned something today. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next episode next Saturday.